Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Tease. It is Father Christian, the place where we're going to tease out the scripture before we jump into it this weekend. And this weekend is going to be, you know, it's the Book of Common Prayer. It's not in here. It's in the Bible. It is Acts 19, 1 through 7. Acts 19, 1 through 7. We'll be reading the message translation at CFW and the NIV at all the others. Now here is what we're going to get down to, is this whole meaning of baptism. It begs the question, what, what does baptism mean to you? Because it is the bedrock of what unites all of us as Christians. Whether you're a Baptist, a Pentecostal, an Episcopalian, a Catholic, wherever you are, we're all agreeing on one thing, which is sort of this entrance right into a life of Christ, of following Jesus, is baptism. There might be other things we disagree on, there might be theologies, there might be other things, but you never should have to redo your baptism. You don't need to be double dipped. I mean, you can and it happens, but you don't have to. It's this universal right that we all agree on. But what does it mean? And a lot of times we've been baptized when we were five months old, six months old. I was like four months old. So you have the rest of your life kind of to live into this baptism because you weren't even really aware of when it happened. So the scripture this Sunday is Acts 19, 1 through 7, which is going to be Paul talking to some disciples that are out in Ephesus and realizing that they're kind of looking at baptism 1.0 and he wants to pull a Beyonce on them and upgrade them to 2.0 and saying, you're kind of stuck in the John the Baptist version of baptism, which is a forgiveness of sins. And I want to upgrade you to 2.0, which is about Jesus, the baptism in the name of Christ, which is going to bring the Holy Spirit upon you. Now you're part of this body of Christ. You've been united into this full body of Christ and been given the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit comes with gifts and those gifts can do plenty of things like turn this world upside down with love. Pretty big stuff if we choose to accept this gift that's been given to us, i.e. that's what Christmas is all about, accepting this rebirth of Jesus in our lives. So this means that no matter what you might think about Episcopalians, Catholics, uh, the Pentecostals, whatever it might be, guess what? You're part of the same body of Christ. We're all united in this baptism. We're all united in the one spirit. So ask yourself, what does your baptism mean to you? And it feels like, I don't know, Father Christian, I just, whatever. Or, my gosh, it's life-changing. Wherever you might be on that scale, bring it to church this Sunday, and let's continue that conversation. Because maybe we need to do a reaffirmation class, or maybe you need to jump into an adult confirmation class to be able to sink back into your baptismal roots and claim what it really means to be baptized in the name of Jesus. So this Sunday is Epiphany, and we'll get an Epiphany as we uh, look at Acts 19, 1 through 7, and we know it is not wrong or off if we might be maybe not embracing the full immensity of our baptism, because even the early disciples, the early church struggled to really know what's going on with it. So let's get into that this Sunday. God bless you. I will see you then, and Happy New Year.